Hi, I'm Keith. I'm going to show you how to change the engine oil, engine oil filter, and refill the oil on a Cat 314E. I'll be going over the differences between this machine and other brands as in Hitachi and Volvo so that you can use this video to change those items as well. First thing that we have to do is there's a belly pan underneath the machine. We've got to remove that belly pan. You're probably going to have to do this for most makes and models. Some machines you can reach up and open the engine oil drain by hand without removing it, but we're going to show you to change this any, or to remove this belly pan anyways. On this particular machine, there's four bolts that hold the belly pan on. Some machines have six, some machines have more. This particular belly pan, some other models, including Hitachi, John Deere, and Volvo, the ones further in, the bolt holes are slotted. So you don't have to take the bolts out, you can just loosen them. Then the other two, you'll remove the bolts, and then you can just slide it off the front too. It makes it easy for installation as well. You can slide it on, and you don't have to hold a heavy belly pan up in place. The next step is to grab an empty bucket so we can catch the oil. Some machines take more than one empty bucket, depending on the size, make, and model. Make sure you have enough empty buckets to catch the used oil so we don't create a mess on the, on the ground. So on this particular machine, it has a ball valve right here with a small hose attached to it. Some machines right in the bottom will have a drain plug, which you'll have to remove the drain plug. Now careful when you remove that drain plug because as soon as it comes out, oil will be coming out. In this case, I'm going to put an empty bucket underneath this hose and when I open this ball valve, the oil will come out of this hose and be caught in an empty bucket. I'm going to crack the ball valve loose. This one is more of a needle valve instead of a ball valve, so you actually have to unscrew it a few turns. The further you unscrew it, the faster the engine oil starts to come out. Now we can just let that drain. Now that the engine oil is finished draining, we're gonna close the valve, we're gonna put the belly pan back on. In this case, I am gonna use pliers to make sure that it is tight enough. Now you can put the belly pan back on. And that is how you drain the engine oil out of almost any excavator. To change the engine oil filter here, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you catch all the engine oil. You don't wanna walk away from it while it drains because some machines are gonna take more than one pail. So you have to be able to catch when your pail needs to be changed. So I don't suggest changing the engine oil filter while the engine oil is draining. Do one and then do the other. There's a piece on the bottom of this filter housing that we can put a wrench on. If a wrench doesn't do it, we can use a socket and a bigger ratchet. In this case, we'll try and use a wrench. One small hit with a hand, filter came loose. Now is the time we take our drain pan, we get it underneath the filter to catch any oil that's gonna come out. Be careful as when the oil filter starts to unscrew, it's full of engine oil, it becomes a little bit off balance and you don't wanna let it go. I like to try and leave the catch can up top. As you can see, the filter housing is still dripping a little bit of oil. My drain pan will catch that oil. Whenever I'm doing any filters on any machine, I always keep a bucket, small piece of metal that has holes in it on top of it. I can put the filters on it. They can drain into the bucket safely. And then I don't have to throw oily filters full of oil anywhere and make more of a mess. This particular filter comes with the filter housing. This one is a factory OEM filter. You wanna make sure that we add a little bit of an oil film to the sealing surface of the gasket. 
you can use a little bit of the oil in the oil filter housing. That's a good way to do it. And that lubricates the seal as you put it on. When you screw it tight, it doesn't bind or rip. It lets it slide. You don't want to go too tight with it. It's okay to use the wrench. Just give it a little bit of a snug. You know that it's tight enough then you'll feel it bottom out comes to a stop just like that. I'll show you again. Goes easy then just comes to a stop. And then I give it a little bit of a snug. That's more than tight enough. You don't need to go any tighter than that. This will work for all makes and models. A lot of machines will use a canister style fuel, uh, engine oil filter, just a metal housing. Same as fuel filters, some hydraulic filters. You want to just thread it on, lubricate the seal. When it starts to meet, screw it hand tight. You don't need to go any tighter than that. It's excessive to go tighter. When you go to remove it at a later date, it's very difficult to remove it. And that's how you successfully change an engine oil filter on a CAT 314, as well as other makes and models. We're going to refill the engine oil now on this CAT 314. This will work for any make model of excavator, heavy equipment, uh, you know, all machines. It's a pretty generic video that we're going to do here. First of all, we're going to open the hood. You have to locate the engine fill, which in this case is the top of the valve cover. Some machines, if you're looking at the back of the engine, it'll be on the side. Next, you're going to take a funnel. You're going to put it somewhere where it can't tip over. You can put oil in it and not, have, not worry about it uh, falling over and losing engine oil all over everything. Next is the engine oil. Now, in this case, we're going to use 1540 mineral oil. You can use synthetics depending on the manufacturer. Again, you want to look into it. Um, some smaller machines call for lighter weight oils. Please uh, verify with your manufacturer specs. When you fill in the engine oil, some machines, for example, a Hitachi 75, if you fill it up too fast, it will dump a little bit of engine oil into the intake system, which will cause catastrophic failure when you go to start the machine. So if you're worried about it, just fill it up slow, put a little bit of engine oil in, let that oil drain down so it can get all the way down into the oil pan and it doesn't overfill too fast. You can judge how much engine oil is going to go into the machine by how much oil that you pulled out when you drained the engine oil. If you're unsure, if you're worried about getting close and you don't want to overfill it, locate the engine oil dipstick. Every machine has one. This one is right here. You pull it out. You want to wipe it off first. Don't read, don't take a first reading because it could have some old engine oil on it from when you drained it. In this case, it looks like there's an H and a line right there. We don't want to go any higher than that line. That's the high mark. Down here is an L and a line. That's the low mark. We want to make sure we're definitely in between those two lines. I'd like to be quite higher up, closer to the H line. You can see here, there's engine oil here. We're on the line and you can see it actually goes up to right here. So we know that we're definitely within the range, but we want to bring it up to here. So I'm going to add a little bit more engine oil. Keep adding oil until you're sufficiently at the high mark. We do not want to overfill it. Still needs a little bit more. I don't want to overfill. I'd rather check it 10 times than go too full. As you can see now, it may be hard to see on the camera, but I'm right in the middle there. If I Maybe if I turn it, you can see some of the sunshine on it. And if we turn it over, right in the middle is where that high mark is. We don't want to add any more. But remember, we just changed the engine oil filter. When we start this machine, that engine oil filter is going to fill up and it's going to take some of the oil out of the engine. So next, we're going to start the engine. We're going to let the engine oil fill up. We're going to check for leaks. And then we're going to double check our engine oil. And most likely, we'll have to top it up a little bit more. Make sure you put the engine oil dipstick back in and make sure you remove your funnel and put the engine cap back on before starting the machine. Next, we're gonna start the engine. We gotta get that engine oil filled up, or the engine oil filter filled up with engine oil so that we can take an accurate reading. 
first we're going to start it, we only need to run it for 5 to 10 seconds. You may hear a buzzer come on, that's okay. In this case, no buzzer came on. What that buzzer is telling you is that there's low engine oil pressure. It'll stay on until the engine oil filter is filled up and it creates engine oil pressure. It's okay, you don't have to worry about it, that is very normal. Now that we know that the engine oil filter is full, we can take an accurate reading of the level of the engine oil and we can top up if necessary. Now that we put it back in, we can definitely see our engine oil has come off the high level mark. So we're gonna put our funnel back in and we're gonna add a little bit of engine oil. It's very important that you have a clean funnel when you put it in. Otherwise when you pour the engine oil in, it takes the contaminants that are in your funnel and puts it into your engine. Now you can see, I'm pretty sure it's a little bit dirtier from, from running it. We're right just below that high mark. That's more than sufficient. If your engine's a little bit older, has a small engine oil leak, or it burns a little bit of engine oil, you know that you have lots of volume from the high mark to the low mark, and that you're safe to run it and not worry every 10 minutes that the engine oil is running low. Make sure we put the dipstick back in. We pull our funnel out. We put our engine oil fill cap back on. And we can close the hood. And that's how we successfully change the engine oil, specifically a Cat 314E, but it'll work for all other makes and models the same way.